Hello everyone and welcome to our special edition series of Just Talk, commemorating the life and legacy of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. With our world amid a global pandemic and with the current polarized climate within our country, Dr. King's message, I Have a Dream, still today brings a renewed message of hope. Hope of equality for all people, regardless of the color of their skin, brings that to a reality. A familiar quote by Dr. King states, if you can't fly, then run. If you can't run, then walk. If you can't walk, then crawl. But whatever you do, you have to keep moving forward. We have to keep moving forward to ensure this dream becomes a reality. Let's listen in on some of our community members' insights on the importance of remembering the life of Dr. King. Hello, I'm Conway Mayor Bart Castleberry, and I'm here with you today to let you know that we as a city are celebrating Dr. Martin Luther King. Uh, what a lot of you may not know is Dr. King was actually a fourth generation pastor. So before he was a leader, uh, he was also a pastor. And I, back in college, I had a chance to write a paper on Dr. King. And a lot of the things that he said, many of his quotes stood out to me. But some that really stood out to me was that he said, I have decided to stick with love because hate is too great a burden to bear. And he also said love is the only force capable of transforming an enemy into a friend. And he also said that pay, people fail to get along because they fear each other. They fear each other because they don't know each other. And they don't know each other because they have not com communicated with each other. And I think that's what sets us apart. God created all of us with the capability to love and to communicate. And I think that's what Dr. King was trying to tell us. I know that that's what he left me with. So thank you, and I hope you enjoy this day. Hi friends, ZC Mulby here, Senior Pastor of the True Holiness Saint Center in the beautiful city of Conway, Arkansas. And we have come today to commemorate, in fact, to celebrate the life and the legacy of Dr. Martin Luther King. When I think of Dr. King, there are two things that come to mind. Number one, I think about Dr. King's dream. I love Dr. King's dream. Dr. King believed in a future America where every man and woman would be thought of and treated equally. I love his dream. Dr. King himself said, and he believed in a future America where we would all be judged by the content of our character and not the color of our skin. I love his dream. And even though the dream has not been fully realized, we are well on our way to making the dream a full reality. From a personal perspective, I am keenly aware that I'm standing on the very strong and broad shoulders of those like Dr. King that helped make my success possible. Number one, I love his dream. But then secondly today, I love Dr. King's approach. Dr. King believed in nonviolence. Dr. King believed in peaceful protest. I love Dr. King's approach to the dream. One of my favorite quotes from Dr. King is simply this, darkness cannot drive out darkness, only light can do that. Hate can't drive out hate, only love can do that. So in conclusion today, as we celebrate Dr. King's life and legacy, I want to encourage you to always strive for equality for all of our fellow citizens. And when we disagree, and sometimes we will disagree, let's disagree in the spirit of kindness and human dignity. Today we celebrate Dr. King. I'm Houston Davis, president of the University of Central Arkansas, and very proud uh, to be able to join you as we celebrate and lift up the memory uh, of Dr. Martin Luther King, Jr. I personally um, just think about the courage, courage of conviction, um, as I think about a leader that has to step up 
um, and, 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 and be there in a position where you know that the majority of the world is going to be against what you stand for. You know that many are going to shout down um, your values, uh, the mission that you feel uh, for the people that you uh, are advocating for. Uh, the courage that that took, I'm glad that on an annual basis, and we should on a daily basis, lift up uh, that type of uh, commitment um, to others, commitment to advocacy of others, and commitment to make community greater. Uh, there are many things about MLK Day uh, that I hope that on a college campus that our students uh, join in. Um, one is just a, a reflection upon that we all have a collective dignity um, that we should all lift up and that we should all uh, value. Uh, that every student, every citizen has a voice. Um, every citizen um, has uh, personal convictions that they stand for and that they um, should be honored for those convictions. Um, I absolutely um, want this to always be an opportunity to celebrate the diversity in our community. Here at UCA, um, we have students from dozens and dozens of walks of life, uh, but we come together collectively uh, to be a university community in which we're looking to be able to lift up and support and nurture and develop all of those shared voices. Uh, and again, MLK Day is a great opportunity for that. Uh, and then there also is just our reflection upon the integrity that we stand for. Um, integrity that we as individuals um, certainly espouse um, and hope to live out every day, but then that which we as a university. Um, there are some things um, that we absolutely are going um, to, to, to stand for on a daily basis, and that is making certain that we know that we want to leave our community better than we found it. Um, that is that we want to make certain that everyone in our midst knows that they are valued as a person and that this is a place where they can be nurtured and feel like they can grow. And that we also want to make certain that someone leaves our university community knowing how to make a difference in their world and make their communities better. In the end, that's the legacy of a university that's committed to core values like academic vitality and integrity and diversity. Um, we want to live that out on a daily basis here at UCA and Martin Luther King Jr. certainly um, set the pace uh, for how we should do that and the spirit um, and the intent uh, through which we should make certain to, to live out those values. We very much appreciate the opportunity to be able to join you in lifting up and celebrating this great man and all that he stood for, uh, and we wish you well um, as we continue to fight the good fight. Hello, my name is Franklin Holbrook. I'm with the Fargo County NAACP, and we're here celebrating the legacy of Dr. Martin Luther King uh, for year 2021. Uh, I'd like to speak on a couple of things, uh, at least three, to express uh, my admiration for who Dr. King is and what impact he made to the, uh, my life, uh, life of uh, the citizens of, uh, of the United States, as well as globally. Uh, his calling, purpose by God, uh, with God's power, peace, his protection, uh, to serve mankind in, in the areas of human rights and racial justice. Uh, American leaders had several choices to choose which black activists to engage with. Stokely Carmichael was a student for black power. Huey P. Newton uh, was police to police with the Black Panthers. Malcolm X, by any means necessary. Uh, President Lyndon B. Johnson chose Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. with the non-violent protest most, uh, movement. Uh, the rest was history. Uh, the result of that was the 1964 Civil Rights Act movement. Uh, that means equal rights for all citizens. And it reinforced the 13th, 14th, and 15th Amendment with uh, 13th Amendment freeing the slaves. 14th Amendment provided the law that protected the slaves as citizens of the United States of America and then the 15th Amendment gave rights to vote. I'm proud to say that I'm a byproduct of the work and the legacy of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. What's going on currently, uh, the 1964 Act, the Rights Act is still in effect. Uh, we, voting rights, still in effect, but it's been addressed or uh, attacked uh, and during every congressional session. Uh, affirmative action is no longer in corporate America, but there's still hope. Uh, we're more uh, informed about the issues that are challenging us with, our, with African Americans, with jobs, housing, education, um, and employment. I think it's important that we focus on 
the legacy of Dr. King and stay, continue to teach, teach uh, black history, uh, open up those doors to allow it to be taught in all the schools as well as the universities. And more so, we need to have the black agenda about uh, in corporate America. Let's, let's, let's promote uh, equity as well as equality. Equity is a change of culture and it, and it guarantees the facts that we are equal citizens and we deserve every right to, for life, liberty, and pursuit of happiness. Let's make sure that this year we take a day off to, be a, uh, to commemorate the life and the works of Dr. Martin Luther King on his huge success, his huge calling by God to change and inspire white America to believe that we are not just products or property. We are people of the human race. Thank you for this day, this opportunity to share with you my take on Dr. Martin Luther King. Hi, I'm Adina White. I'm the founder and chief storyteller of Black Belt Media, LLC. We produce the Black Belt Voices podcast. And when I started this project, it was kind of because I saw a gap in coverage. I, I noticed that Black Southerners weren't really being talked about in the media. And we were kind of being erased from the whole narrative of what it means to be Southern. And we know that there's one Black Southerner who stands out, not Oprah Winfrey, but <laughs> Martin Luther King Jr. And his legacy and life has been, is so important to all of us. And one thing that strikes me about Dr. King is that he was a man of action. A lot of times when we think of Dr. King, we think of his I Have a Dream speech, and when he says he wants um, little black boys and little black girls to join hands with little white boys and little white girls. And that's very important, and unity is wonderful. But we know that there needs to be action. Um, Dr. King, he's often cited as a way to criticize current day protesters and to say Dr. King wouldn't have wanted, wouldn't have done that. But what we have to remember is Dr. King was not popular in his day. Dr. King, him taking to the streets and nonviolent protests was in fact not a popular thing among many people. So we have to remember when we look at his life and legacy that he was a man of action, he wasn't afraid to go against the grain, he wasn't this sanitized, uh, saintly figure that we've all kind of come to realize. Um, so I, I love that Dr. King took action to change policies and change structures. And he didn't just sit around and, and hope that everything would work out for the best. So he, was, he, he preached love, but he also preached action. And he preached um, that, you know, silence could be complicit. Like we need to use our voices and speak up. And that kind of motivated me to do the same with my podcast. Um, I know Dr. King by any means, but I do feel like it's important to use my voice and to get comfortable being uncomfortable, saying things that may saying things that are for the right reason, but that may not be popular. And Dr. King wasn't worried about making friends back in the day. He, he did what he needed to do to make sure that we all can live in a just and equal society. Thank you. Thank you for joining us today as we commemorated the life of Dr. King. We've heard great things about him, leaving a legacy behind, his legacy of love, having a dream, action, education, and we must continue to move his efforts forward as the dream is still coming to full fruition. So today, as we celebrate the life and legacy of Dr. King, remember, it's still a day on, not a day off. Although we're in this virtual climate and we're not able to do as much with COVID-19, still remember to do something special today to make sure we take action and moving forward to keep his dream alive. He had a dream, and it's our job to make sure that that dream comes to reality.